So the purpose of this short video is to share more about how Collaborative Aotearoa is well positioned to offer support to localities in implementing the upcoming health reforms. Sylvia will share Tamarack's uh, experience as a field catalyst in supporting community change makers with proven tools and practices, including collective impact, which I know is um, a real hot topic at the moment in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We will specifically discuss collective action with community, which is Collaborative Aotearoa's tailored approach to collective impact uh, for Aotearoa New Zealand. So I'll pause there. Uh, so there is a lot to cover in this short time, um, but let me start by sharing some highlights about Collaborative Aotearoa's journey. Many of you will know that we started out as Healthcare Home Collaborative back in 2016 with a group of influential leaders uh, from the health sector, realising that the potential of the patient-centred healthcare home model of care for general practice. The uptake of the model continues to grow across Aotearoa New Zealand, with almost a third of the population benefiting um, from better outcomes and the evidence is suggesting, whilst it's early evidence, it is suggesting there is better access, there's better equity of, uh, of service and much more culturally appropriate in, in terms of our needs in Aotearoa. So the um, challenge at the moment obviously facing primary care being COVID, we've also found that the model um, with certain aspects of it has absolutely supported in the management um, of COVID in terms of the here and now. We were very lucky to have Fire Mill Samuels, um, our lived experience context expert, as we call her, uh, to guide us in this mahi. And, you know, this work um, came about to ensure we were honouring Te Tariti or Waitangi and specifically that better access for Māori. And um, I think we're certainly on a journey to achieving that. So, as we moved into digital health support because of the COVID response, um, we extended our um, work remit ultimately. Um, and then the health reforms, the current health reforms that are upon us, we recognised that collective impact as an approach would be very, um, very much uh, favourable to localities across primary and community care. So it was actually at this point that we evolved to become collaborative Aotearoa to better reflect the role as a field catalyst uh, for a growing number of models of care, including localities. So using our approach to collaboration, sharing and importance of lived experience, we became collaborative Aotearoa at the end of 2021. Um, we have a couple of slides in terms of our vision that uh, Sylvia will, will share and really just to give you some insights into, into our uh, thinking. So that actually was the enhancing model of care in the beautiful fire mail um, uh, is reflected in our booklet and uh, is still working and guiding our guiding our work um, today and we're forever grateful. So in terms of the next slide, so our vision aims to bring together a strong collaboration of leaders committed to building an equitable future. And we really want to elevate those voices of whānau and community and most of the services um, across New Zealand and in terms of the health reforms, um, you know, ensure there's that continued support for general practice, the digital health that we've become more expert in and obviously the localities learning platforms underpinned by Te Tiriti or Waitangi. The next slide um, looks at our vision, uh, sorry, our mission and um, is more that our operational level of you know continuing to partner with experts you know to um, powerfully support the system change again looking at that locally designed and tailored approaches the better connection and then recognizing the iwi maori leadership and honoring to tariti again at that fourth front with equity we quickly wanted to touch on uh, the values uh, of collaborative artero which came out of um, our work of the healthcare home model of care with um, Māori leaders actually recognising that we needed to have 
and the model and all of our work underpinned by these strong values that you can see on your on your screen. The, the recent work that we've done uh, in terms of really articulating our value proposition to the sector is around our promise and the, and the next slide actually highlights um, some of the areas that we've been working in consistently since we came about back in 2016, but really starting to get clear um, of our role and purpose. So obviously that catalyst for change, that real strong collaboration, influence, and, and you know, all the nice words like empower, but we are working in a sector where, you know, empowerment of those um, doing the frontline work, but those have lived experience as well. And you can't move away from the fact that practical implementation is everything and ensuring it's sustainable. And we have our champions. So we really wanted to just um, articulate that as we've moved forward um, with a bit of a refresh of collaborative Aotearoa. And our relationship with Tamarack uh, and with Sylvia specifically has been absolutely integral to our journey and the shared learnings um, that we've embedded and that actually, sorry, enables us to fast track um, the understanding in terms of New Zealand context. So thank you, Sylvia, for all your support over the past years. Collaborative Aotearoa is grateful for all of the bright lights across uh, Aotearoa as well, because you know the work of collective impact in New Zealand isn't new, uh, and we're learning within New Zealand, but also from our international partners. Um, we do see ourselves as a field catalyst, uh, albeit at the moment on a small scale. And um, what would be really lovely, Sylvia, is if you can actually share um, your experience as a long-standing field catalyst. Thanks so much, Amarji. Honestly, I'm looking here at your promises to your network, and they so resonate um, with um, Tamax approach as well. And so this is one of the things that I think I've found most um, exciting, I think, in our work together, because we're doing similar things, but in different contexts. It's similar enough, though, that I think we learn a lot from each other along the way. Um, for those of you who know nothing about Tamarack, I mentioned at the beginning that we are a Canadian charity. We've been around for just over 20 years, and the focus of our work is to make the work of community change simpler, more effective, more sustainable, and therefore more likely to advance lasting change. Um, and we do this in a number of ways, but one of the most important Important, and this really speaks to that field catalyst role that you were asking about, Amarjeet, is that we link local collective impact initiatives into a coordinated network that, and we accelerate that work because they are connected, because those localities are learning from one another. Um, we find that very, very effective. And we have consistently generated, what we've seen is though collective impact locally has proven to be a very effective framework and approach for lasting high impact community change. When you link them together with the help of a field catalyst, then those localities actually benefit from that value add that the field catalysts bring, and they can actually find their efforts to advance change accelerated significantly. So what do we mean when we talk about a field catalyst? We see that as a special kind of intermediary. So in sectors like ours, intermediaries aren't anything new, right? We have professional associations. We have, you know, capacity building organizations. What's unique, I think, about the field catalyst is it actually encompasses four roles in a really integrated way that both weave together and strengthen the most Bo uh, the bottom-up local strategies, but then very strategically and effectively link those local bottom-up grassroots efforts with top-down sort of system leader policy-driven um, approaches to really kind of meet in a powerful middle place. And so the challenge and the benefit, I think, is in that ability or capacity to, to kind of weave together all four of those roles. So we're not focusing on just one, we're actually integrating them together. So this picture actually demonstrates it, I think, a little bit better. 
And we've written about this in a recent article that's referenced at the bottom if people want to dig more into what we're talking about here. But you'll see there are four integrated roles. So in the top right, that first role, um, the field catalyst, TAMRAC, or, or um, collaborative ETORA, we play a role really understanding and knowing and having relationships with big, you know, the top system actors, understanding their dynamics, understanding their pressures, understanding their aspirations. We then also, in a similar way, in the bottom right, spend a lot of time building strong, trusting relationships with local change efforts. And we assist them um, and provide them with resources, capacity building, coaching, tools, facilitation to really strengthen their own local practice. The other thing we do, though, is we link locals together to learn from each other. And I, the reason that that's particularly important in the kind of work that you're doing is that you are doing, um, you're helping to advance work that has not been done before. Right. And so it isn't like we have this proven recipe and we can say, OK, a locality A, you take this and you input it. And, you know, according to our spreadsheet by, you know, month four, you should be over here. And it doesn't work that way in communities because every community is unique and every community is different. Right. So what we do know, though, is when we link them together, they can have the benefit of learning from each other. They can get inspired by each other's successes. They can learn from each other's stumbles. It's, it's really, really powerful. But as the field catalyst, that e effort of hosting and linking those local efforts together helps us to see emerging patterns. So while every locality's approach might be unique, ultimately, if they start hitting the same barriers, there's a clue that having each one of them work individually to try and address that barrier may not be the most leverage. And so we can then play a real facilitating role in convening groups of them to do some deep thought about, okay, so what might some workable strategies look like? What have other jurisdictions done when faced with similar barriers? What if we did this? What if we did that? So um, we work with them to generate some uh, potential solutions to those barriers. And then we link them up in number four, right back up to those uh, broader system actors. So we've made, so those number two, we've straightened, uh, strengthened the capacity of the locals. Number three, we link them and make their work and their impact more coherent, more visible. And then we work in, we help them link better with those top system actors to nudge forward positive change, right? So by linking the policy opportunities with the wisdom of the grassroots. It's a long-winded way of explaining it, but I hope I've sort of captured the essence of what this is. And the last thing I'll say about it is that um, we've been doing this work for 20 years. And uh, what we've learned, uh, we've captured just the essence of those important roles of the field catalyst and what change looks like as you move it to scale beyond one locality across many. And the last thing I'll say is that um, while we've been doing this work for a long time, um, our articulation of it, this notion of a field catalyst is still very new. So I'm putting it out there in the spirit um, of thinking in progress. And so if there's questions, if there's thoughts, if there's recommendations, if stuff feels confusing, we welcome that coming right back. And so I guess for me, my question for you is when you think about those four integrated roles, and I can go back so they're there, what um, and how do you see the work of Collaborative Etora really kind of being mirrored in those four roles? Mm. And, um, this, you know, the, the theory of this absolutely resonates and um, often we can be um, working in a, what, what sometimes is considered a very common sense approach, but when you put the theory around it, you go, wow, absolutely, we're doing that. So I do feel that uh, collaborative Aotearoa, um, whilst on a small scale right now, plays in this intermediary space. So if we if we go back to our example of um, healthcare home, the from the outset 
we did bring many of those system actors, as you would call them in the theory, together, you know, real lead clinicians, lived experience, you know, government um, policy uh, individuals who, you know, um, want to see that advancement of, of um, primary care and this particular model of, of um, uh, general practice, you know, bringing them together to share their learnings was, you know, front and centre uh, in everything that we did. The um, reason why, you know, the, the success uh, of it, and, and you know, it's, a, it's an opinion of a success, but it's not just my own opinion, is in those strong, strong trust in relationships. So ensuring that across our steering group, across our working groups, across our network, there was real trust um, and, and connectedness, what we would actually in New Zealand call call whakawhanaunatanga. You start there and then actually you start to you know, achieve more. We, um, when you get into that, um, providing that visible, coherent robustness, one of the first things we did with the model was create um, a model of care requirements to provide that specificity for the sector, not, uh, not to um, demand that this is the way forward, but to actually share uh, the common practice that across the leadership group felt would work at the front line. And so we recognised that it isn't a one size fits all, but there were many that wanted, you know, um, quite an articulation of, well, what does it, what do, does each characteristic of this model actually mean? And so we were able to work with frontline and provide uh, tools, templates, resources, learning uh, from each other to really fast track um, things. And generally the resources that sit there open sourced, um, you know, the feedback we've had is that it might be that it doesn't fit perfectly, but 80% of the content is relevant and 20% is tailored. So that 80-20 rule absolutely applies. Um, the, the difficult area, uh, I would say, is that sort of uh, nudging the system, you know, being that continued ad advocate for system change. Um, and that does require, you know, um, multiple parties and we'll continue to do that. We'll absolutely continue to do that. and. It will take more than collaborative Aotearoa, but absolutely, um, I think we we do work in this space. The learnings uh, from your 20 years um, experience absolutely resonate. And I think you'll find when our um, audience um, reflects on this, we will want to actually um, take those on board and actually really use them to allow us to accelerate the change more effectively in Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, and again, you know, they're, they're kind of, I wouldn't say obvious, but when you look at them, you go, of course, you know, that makes absolute sense. But to have them written down and then for us to take heed, I, I would put them right up uh, front and centre. Um, yeah, I, I, I think being able to articulate the field catalyst and the learnings will add absolute value to us. Well, and Without I think it. what I love is in the spirit of reciprocity, as you mm. take this and work with it and make it your own, you're going to bring insights back yes. to us, right? That will help us to see and think about our role differently. And it becomes really um, generative, right? In that way, which is the beauty of this work. 